achieve those things. So I would say detach from the whole idea of quantum jumping, but you shouldn't even need to quantum jump because quantum jump exists that you're moving to a place that you're not already there. And if you have to jump, that means you have to go somewhere. And if you're not where already you want to be, then you've already lost from the beginning anyways. I always say this, right? There's a secret frequency called um, the frequency of not needing. And I made a YouTube video about this. It's literally called the secret frequency of not needing. And your reality will only begin to reconstruct itself when you get your mind to a point where you no longer need it. This is why the people that have the most money give a fuck about it the least. The people that want money the most have the least. And I say that as somebody who has seen both sides of that particular reality. And it might not make sense, but I promise you that's how it is. So that's, that's what I have to say on the quantum jump and stuff. How do you control your thoughts? Think positive, trying to think all positively all the time. All right, cool. Keep, keep these questions coming because I'm going to catch up to them. So one, stop trying to control your mind. And I say that because <laughs> controlling your, like, it's difficult to control a wild animal. And I say that because you have to eventually break that an particular animal into submission. And when you say control your thoughts, it's negating the fact that you don't create your thoughts. It's easier to control your thoughts if you create your thoughts, but you don't create your thoughts. And what I mean, I mean it like this. Let's say on your phone, imagine, I think the average thought someone has a day is like four to 6,000 or some shit like that. Um, Somebody double check that, but I'm sure the amount of average thoughts that we have in a particular day is like four to 6,000 or it's like 60,000, whatever it is, right? It's in the thousands. So you receive thoughts like a device, like your phone receives notifications. You don't create thoughts, you receive them. You receive them from the mental plane. You are a device that can receive messages. The mistake that you make is selecting particular thoughts to engage with. If I texted you and I sent you a message on your phone saying you have won, you know, 10 billion text, text back hello to secure your money, you'd look at it and because it's so nonsensical, you wouldn't even take it serious. And this is what you need to do with the particular thoughts. Because once you understand that you receive any type of thought, right? You receive any type of thought because at any given moment, your vibration is always changing. Which is why when you're upset, it's easier for you to continuously receive negative thoughts. Like when you're pissed off, negative thoughts come easily. And it's because you're in a particular vibration where the thoughts that are being sent are coming from a lower level. And you can, you know, this goes up and down, up and down, depending upon where you are during your day. So instead of trying to control your thoughts, first learn how to not react to to your thoughts because the first step is the awareness that your thoughts aren't something you create but they're something you receive and once you look at them as something you receive the same way you wouldn't entertain a message from someone you didn't like you don't have to entertain thoughts that you don't like and of course this comes with conscious practice but meditation is always the start Edison and Einstein did what? I'll say this again. So to access the theater part of their minds, Edison and Einstein used to have a glass, not glass ball, a metal ball, like a little ball, and it was metal. They would keep a tray on the right side of their chair when they would nap. So they would nap with this ball in their hand and hold it and squeeze it tight, right? And as they're falling asleep, the moment that they kind of begin to doze off, the ball would drop. And because the ball would drop and hit the tray, it would create such a loud bang that it keeps them consciously awake while their brain is in that theta state. And at that point, then they would receive intuition and insight onto particular matters that they had, or they would use it to further program their particular minds. And Einstein actually spoke about something called spooky entanglement, which is crazy. I'm actually going to make a video about spooky entanglement because I've been going crazy in the quantum physics over these past couple of days. Thoughts on witchcraft. You're going to have to be a bit more specific. You're going to have to be a bit more specific. <clears throat> can you define a thought form? Simple. I can define a thought form to you like this. A thought form is a collection of thoughts, a multitude of thoughts. It's, it's quite literally that simple. So if you're continuously thinking a thought, then it literally becomes a thought form. A thought form is a combination of thoughts or ideas. What you call ideas are really entities. For, so for example, being broke is an idea. Struggling is an idea. These things are ideas that mask themselves as truths. And what I mean by that is 
you know, for example, is life hard? Most people would say yes. Is that a truth? No, it's an idea, but it's masked itself as a particular truth. And dependent upon your susceptibility to allowing this information to permeate your subconscious mind, then it will either be real to you or fake to you. Do you believe the law of one, like the raw one material, bro? You know, it's crazy. I literally have all the Law of One books. This was like their 50th anniversary or some shit like that. So I literally just bought all the books. So yeah, I do. Um, it's interesting stuff to read. I always struggle with letting go of your manifestation, letting it come to you all simultaneously, visualizing my desire. All right, cool. So there's two aspects of this. So one, the visualization is for you to create an emotional charge powerful enough to permeate your subconscious mind. But then as you're operating in your day, you need to relinquish that emotion. So for example, you know, you're, you, whatever you're wearing right now, are you excited to be wearing these clothes? Am I excited to be wearing any of these clothes? No, because they're not new. They're things that I've had for a very long time. So once you've had something for a particular long time, there's this kind of loss in admiration for it. Not to say that you take it for granted, but technically you kind of do take it for granted. And that's what you need to enter with into your reality. So instead of seeing them as joined events, you need to see them as two separate events. The way people set goals, would you say it's incorrect, meaning they set a goal with a date or visualization in the correct way and allowing the frequency? The way, hold on, let me read that again. The way people set goals, would you say it's incorrect, meaning setting a goal with a date or visualization is the correct way? There's no, there's no particular right way. Truth be told, reality being a placebo, you actually determine the right way because, for example, what you're referencing is thinking grow rich. Is that a firework? Anyways, what you're referencing is Think and Grow Rich. And Think and Grow Rich, um, Napoleon Hill says, write down the specific date that you're going to attain whatever you want. Now, if I came to you and said, that's wrong, that is negating the amount of people that have done that, and it's correct. So stop trying to look for a particular right method. There is no particular right method. And here's the funny thing about a lot of kind of these spiritual people that put information online, right? Most most of these niggas will tell you that you are God and all of this, but then they say there's rules to manifestation. If you are the God, then the rules is whatever you make it, which is why affirmations work for some people, visualizations work for some people, visual, vision boards work for some people, scripting works for some people. So there's no particular right method. There's the only method that is right is the one that you have accepted as to be the right method. Now, typically, something if I came and told you what would work, you know, something might work for you, but that's only because of the authority that you've given me in your mind. It's nothing more, nothing less. Key these questions coming. Thoughts on astrology? That's a very vague question. You're gonna have to be. You're gonna have to be a bit more specific. Um, how how much do you meditate a day? I meditate a day about an hour a day. The time isn't important. Can someone find God through religious books? The concept of finding God is ludicrous in itself. What is there to find? If you're looking, you've already lost. But if you're asking me, can people acquire enlightenment through religious books? I'd be an asshole if I came and said no. I'd also be incorrect. I don't believe there's one particular path to enlightenment. That's what religion tries to come sell you. You know, you know I have a Quran, I have a Bible, a Torah, a Talmud, a Bhagavad Gita. You know, all of these people say our book is the holy book and it's the correct path to enlightenment. But that's that's just nonsensical because there's multiple paths to enlightenment. There's no particular one path. So religious books are a source of particular enlightenment. But where a lot of people get tripped up is this kind of superiority, artificial ego that you get from thinking that yours is the best one and everybody else is wrong. Like, it's just it's just it's just funny. Yeah, I still do trade. I took I took an L today, bro. Do you believe in numerology and life path numbers? I can't I can't say I do believe in them. They're interesting, but I don't really care about them too much. What frequencies to listen to on a daily basis? I create my own frequency. I don't listen to frequencies. Thoughts on cyclomancy. Cyclomancy is a very very good book. You always choose the right things. Do you have any methods you use to reach the theta state? Yeah, I pretend like I'm going to nap. And I'm not even bullshitting you. I see the message to the black man on your soul. Salute, bro. Bro, I got hella books like that. If you're, talk if you're talking those type of books, I got hella books like that. Message to the... Hold on, let me clean my screen. Hold on. 
Message to the black man. Uh, I've got black gods somewhere. How Europe underdeveloped Africa. Um, the destruction of the black civilization. Um, post-traumatic slave syndrome. Um, I got I got as many black books as I possibly could get. This one is crazy. I think this one is Nation of Islam based as well, kind of like the first one. Uh, black power, black gods, bro. Like, trust me. When it comes to the books, I definitely got them. How can I get into the alchemist? Work through the cheat code. I feel like becoming a rea- uh, would be spell my growth. Apply, man. Tell them to get the reality control cheat code, bro. That shit is insane. Appreciate it. Actually, update me on on how that's actually going for you. Um, Nero, we filming tomorrow. Yeah, man, like ramen. You still shout at basketball? Hello, sunshine. Thoughts on satanic music and. <laughs> <laughs> uh, man said thoughts of satanic music and artists selling their soul for money to the hierarchies what it's doing to the peoples all right cool this 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 whole concept of selling your soul is quite funny so you know when i first started studying the occult obviously that's something you come across in this kind of side of the left hand path the whole concept of selling your soul now I'll show you what people think is really like. So people think for these artists, you know, they're sat down by some 33 degree Freemasons, all these old white men with bald heads and those fat things and their mason rings and they're like, all right, cool. We want you to make satanic music and sign your soul. Hold on, let me bring a demon into this room so he can, um, you know, help the process of this exchange. And they're like, oh, you know, cut your blood and write on this paper. That's what people, that's what most niggas think selling your soul is like because of all this kind of Christian vigilante exposing, you know, Satanism and music type niggas make you think how this stuff goes. But it's not like that. In fact, I'd say selling your soul is quite simple. Now, selling your soul isn't a literal process. It is a metaphorical example of the times to which you give up aspects of your, let's say, morality because let's say for for this sake for the sake of the point I'm making let's say morality is something that's linked to the soul it's these moments where you give up your morality and your virtues for anything in the world so for example right let's say I'm a police officer and you know my my police boss my chief he's racist so he sees a black kid with driving and he's like oh let's stop that black kid who's done nothing at all and he's like, come on, let's go beat him up. Now, me knowing that this is something that's inherently wrong, me following to do it, because if I know if I don't do it, I'm going to lose something in the world. Because remember, when you look at these religious texts, the devil is representative of the world, the ego, right? Which is why in Satanism, if you actually study Satanism, which most niggas don't do because they're afraid like children, you'll come to find out the thing that they worship the highest is the ego. You know, a lot of Christians will say, you know, oh, the devil's real because, you know, what do Satanists worship? They worship the devil. No, they worship the ego. Because if even if you look at the story where Jesus was kind of in the desert, you know, Satan supposedly said, look around, you know, all of these things are yours. And the way that you should be able to conceive the devil, right, is a representation of a fallen aspect of consciousness that has fallen down for God's own divinity and got caught up in the hedonism and the pleasures of the world and it has remained at this particular level. So when you're talking about satanic music, I'm not thinking of some some nigger with horns on his head or whatever, right, or a literal being. I'm hearing lower vibrational music that is promoting, centralizing or prioritizing the ego. That's what satanic music is. It's not music that is bringing some devil to life who's waiting to collect your soul and you die. That's, that's, that's nonsensical and it's childish. Satanic music is the promotion of the ego and lust hedonism for the ego. So for example, when you see all these niggas with their chains and all these girls that are half naked and all these cars and all these cribs, which most of them don't even own, right? They're getting you fixated to fall in love with a particular world. That's what Satanism is. And I actually brought down what the Antichrist is in a video. So I hope that answers your question.
thoughts on the situation with Malachi Z York? I have no particular thoughts on it at all. Thoughts on it doesn't lead to the evolution of my mind. It, it literally doesn't. You know, I've looked. I've looked it over. You know, he seems to have a cult about him. You know, a lot of people seem to have a cult over that guy, and I think they've really missed the mark, to be honest. Because any teacher, you know, that people end up, you know, glamorizing and fantasizing over as this one particular savior, you've already lost because what they're supposed to do is awaken to the God within you. Like, I hope none of you niggas follow me. Like, how many people are on this? 65 people. I'm not your te I'm not your teacher. I'm not your follower. I'm not your educator. Don't follow me anywhere. If you follow me anywhere, you might get yourself in a messed up place because you don't know what my intentions are. What you're supposed to do when I put a book out there or I put information out there is to spark the divinity within you for you to then go and make your own moves. I'm nobody's teacher. Ready, Malcolm Gladwell. Yeah, he's great. Man like DK Chops. What do you think to what extent is the world fair though? Mm, I mean, I, I, you're going to have to be specific. Can you get an autograph? DK, not... No, you can't, man. Sorry. Breaking natural laws is selling the soul, I guess. Any book recommendation when it comes to nutrition? I'm probably the last person to talk to when it comes to nutrition. I'm just eating Chinese food. I'm not one of these niggas that's on, you know, will tell you that, you know, you know, that you got to eat spinach and kale and uh, and, and coconut water. Like, uh, it's, it's not one of them things over here, unfortunately. I'm sorry. What's your opinion on people saying they went to heaven in a dream, then they believe it because it's real because they've seen it in their dream? I mean, following that logic, goodness me, the amount of shit that people see in their dream. I, I don't even understand what type of question that is. And that's no disrespect to you. But if you literally follow the logic of that, because people see in a dream that it equates to some sort of particular reality. Niggas have dreams that they can fly. If you jumped off this building, it's more than likely you'd hit the ground. Like, it doesn't mean anything. But when, you, when you're, if you're talking about what I think you're talking about, which is kind of like when you see Christians that are like, you know, I had this dream or I had this you know, near death experience where I went to hell and, you know, I saw this and I saw that. All of that shit is marketing. Because let me ask you a question. If hell was never described to you, would you even know that you're in it? And I was talking about this earlier. And once you really kind of begin to think about this and break this down like this, you know, whoever creates the language that you think in has created the parameters and the potentialities to which your mind can rise. I'll give you an example. English language, the word depression exists. So when we look across the world, there's some niggas that won't leave their house because they're depressed. Now, typically, you know, across certain parts of the world, such as Africa, for example, my people are Zimbabwean, there's no word for depression in the belly. There's literally no word for it. So it can't exist because in order, the thoughts that you have, the thoughts that you have in your head are mental words. And if these mental words curate and construct your reality, then the words that you have at your disposal play the, the kind of fence or the ceiling to what you can manifest in reality. So if the word depression doesn't exist, it can't exist as a concept. And if it can't exist as a concept, it can't be believed in to become a reality. You understand what I'm saying? So I'm catching up with all of this. I create high frequency music. That's very, that's very cool. Thoughts on the nine binary narrative. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. All right, cool. And you know what's funny? This is actually something that I believe is spoke about in the um, Law of One. So, in fact, is it even safe for me to talk about this stuff? Thoughts on the nine barrier narrative, losing polarity and masculine breakdown on the family unit. I don't even know what nine binary means. Can you actually, like, specify? Sorry.
Yeah, I've read Blink by Malcolm Gladwell. I haven't read Outliers, no. He spoke of the Grigor, is that not a form of... Yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's a combination of thought forms and centralized energies to a point where it gives birth to a literal entity that seeks to exist for the very purpose that it was created for. Instead of getting wrapped up in the current events, what do you do to combat that? There's nothing to combat because I just don't do it. I just don't do it. And don't get it twisted. Like, I follow academics and shit. Like, I'm kind of aware of what's going on, but not to the degree of people around me. Like, people around me would be like, oh, did you know this happened? And I'm like, nah. And I don't know. It's just, I just kind of have a natural fence or, you know, limits as far as I go with certain things. I don't really know how to combat it. <clears throat> I've been in this work for 20 years. Are you single? No, I'm not single. Also, why do you use the low frequency N word? There's no particular reason for what I, you know, there's no particular reason for it. You know, it's not something that really should be said. I just say it because I don't know. To, to a degree, it's just something that's part of my vocabulary. You know what I mean? Is it possible to be enlightened and financially successful with lots of material possessions? Definitely, because <coughs> I think for the longest time, you know, wealth has been portrayed to be something that means that you're entwined with the ego and there's this kind of separation between money and spirituality. But that's just perception, because if I begin to say to you, you know, part of the qualities of the creator, the creator is infinite, which means a quality of the creator is abundance, you know, more fruits grow on the trees then we could eat so much so that they fall into the ground and they feed into the cycle again you know the whole idea of overpopulation is actually a lie like overpopulation is it, it's a lie and it's a lie created by the human ego because you know there's more than enough so being financially abundant means that you are in alignment of the creator's energy because if the creator is abundant and you're supposed to embody the qualities of the creator and you're in a scarcity mindset or you're separated from the universal flow of money, then one could argue that you're actually separated from the nature of the creator. And that's just one argument. And I just say that not to say that it's the truth. I say that because, you know, there's two sides of the ways that you can look at things. And for the longest time, black people especially have been kind of programmed to believe that it's, you know, money is evil and that's, and that's it. But it's not necessarily that. So I do think you can be, you know, spiritual and have financial possessions because... You know, unfortunately, the only people that can really make a difference are those with money and influence, unfortunately, right? So if you want to be a spiritual positive, then you're going to need some capacity of influence and money. Bear black God saying the alkaline diet is the only way to figure out, but be stick figures. <laughs> yeah, and I think a lot of people negate the fact that diet isn't one size fits all. You know, you can do it. I think it's like a microbe gut test or something like that. And it essentially shows that, you know, there's different types of foods that fit for different types of people, depending upon your lineage. So there's actually some people that are... Um, allergic to lectins and lectins are I guess chemical compounds that are within the green vegetables that these alkaline people will tell you to eat to a point where it can cause sickness you know like real bad sickness so I guess it's about knowing what works for you because there is no one size fits all you know if you catch somebody saying you can't be you know you can't be spiritual if you're eating meat pause like that's that's just nonsense do you look into black history books bro so, you know, part of my awakening, and I don't even like saying that it's so moist, but anyways, part of that is when I was 16, I went crazy with it. Like I read The Destruction of the Black Civilization, How Europe Underdeveloped Africa, Post-Traumatic Slave Syndrome, um, The Black Gods thing that I've got there, um, Black Power, um, Niggas to Gods, part one and part two. Um, I'm just thinking of once the autobiography of Malcolm X. Uh, there's a couple of other ones, but they're not coming to my head. All that to say, you know, I went deep into studying institutional, systematic racism, black history, black origins, the Nile Valley civilization. I've got those books, the Anunnaki Bible. I've got it. Like I went very, very deep into studying all of that stuff. And I think that stuff was kind of metaphysical in a sense, because it kind of laid the foundations from my own self-perception. Because in history, you know, I remember, I remember all the time, like, 
back in school, it was funny because I don't know if it's still like that. If you're in school, you can tell me this. But kind of in school, it's kind of like Africans versus Jamaicans. And I remember, you know, in history, one point that my teacher, Miss Padgett, God bless her heart. Obviously, she's just doing what she does in it. You know, one point that she kept stressing is like, yes, you know, the Africans sold Africans. And a point that no one ever covers that I later discovered was that, you know, there was so much African blood on the beaches of Africans that were defending other Africans from being enslaved that beaches were painted red for months. You know what I'm saying? So I think it's just about finding that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. So are you saying PTSD does not exist? I mean, I don't know where I could have said that. No, I did not say that. What I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, so let's go to Africa, for for example. Most people probably experience PTSD, but because they don't have PTSD as a concept, the way that they experience it isn't going to be to the same capacity as somebody who does. And I'll give an example. I use depression. So somebody in the UK where depression in the West is normalized as something that is crippling and it's destructive and is ruining your life and is beating you down. And it's this thing that's really evil and, you know, because of all the connotations and information that even go into solidifying it with scientific research on and so forth and how it alters the brain chemistry and stuff like that. Somebody in the UK who feels the feelings of depression is then kind of supercharged by this collective idea of depression being a concept that exists with all of these things and will allow it to cripple their life. Somebody in Africa can still feel depressed because of unsatisfaction in their life, but they don't know that they're feeling depression. So that means that the way they experience it isn't going to be backed by other people saying, yeah, you know, it stopped me from going from my house and all of this. They're more likely to see it as a passing mood. And it's funny because if you have any like, um, if you know any African adults, you know, you look at them and you're like, yeah, you've been through depression. But if you say to them, you're depressed or like, no, 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 I wasn't. I was just, I just wasn't feeling too good and I moved on. And it's because the concept doesn't exist. So the way that it, the way that it's it's experienced is completely different. If you're manifesting a reality that involves others and they're trying to manifest something else, what happens? Um, Give me a specific example. Do you believe Jesus was God? I could spend three hours talking about Jesus, to be honest. Um, But yes, I do. I do believe he was God. And I'm not a Christian. But the same way that I believe Jesus was a God, I believe you're a God. Because those who know the Bible, you can go to Philippians 4, uh, you can go Philippians 4, 5, 6. You know, let this mind be in you that was also in Jesus Christ, who found it not robbery to be in the form of God right or you can go to jesus saying the works that i do you'll be able to do greater and if you go to the word works and translate that into greek that means actions so the actions that i do you can do in greater and this is what jesus said so i believe jesus was god but simultaneously i believe you are god but jesus was embodying the christ energy or the christ archetypes now we can go into gnosticism and stuff like that too but we'll be here for too long have you read reality transurfing yeah i have are you in novella? Yes, I am. I'm half novella, half Shana. Yo, oh, we need this on YouTube. Bro, I got YouTube videos out there. So if you like art on my YouTube, go check it out. Sad to see you laugh at non-binary. This concept goes with breaking the frame imposed by society, by the matrix. Things exist in nature as they are. And we should also be able to exist as who we are. And you're more than entitled to do that. But do I think that it has any correlation to any form of particular spirituality? No, not in the slightest. Not, Not in the absolute slightest. No, not to any, not to any, not to any capacity in the slightest. Does that have anything to do with any form of spirituality or imposing the matrix? No, that's perception, which is fine if that's the way that you chose to perceive it. But 
to paint it as some altruistic level of spiritual elevation that's just not true in the slightest at all because if you really want to break it down when you come to you know understanding the aspects of masculine and feminine polarities then we go to the hermetic law of gender now for those of you who don't know what the hermetic laws are these are the actual universal laws so the law of attraction isn't an actual law that was in the universe there's seven hermetic universal laws given by thoth Thoth is who we get the word thought from. Now, he is the world's first scribe. He's the world's first author. He's the world's um, first alchemist. He taught astrology. He taught astronomy. He taught the occult. He taught spiritual elevation. In the Quran, he's known as the prophet Idris. He traveled back and forth um, between the seventh heaven and earth. Um, seventh heaven. He's, e he's Enoch in the book of Enoch that was taken out of the Bible. He's Mercury to the Romans. He's Hermes to the Greeks. He's Tehuti or Jehuti to the ancient Egyptians. And he's Kunkunkan to the ancient Mayans. Now, once you look, look at his laws, one of the laws is the principle of gender. The principle of gender states that there's masculine and feminine in reality. This goes into the law of polarity. There's only masculine and there's only feminine. These are the only things that exist under the law of polarity. Polarity is duality. It is separation. Right, so, you know, yin, yang, masculine, feminine, hot, cold, um, high, low, you know, long, short. All of these are one energy that exists at different scales depending upon where you're vibrating. So, the aspect of actually coming into breaking the matrix or imposing the limits of the matrix, which, you know, which, like you said, part of that is moving into the particular energy that you came to earth with and then transcending it. Now, the issue is, instead of trying to be two energies before mastering one, it doesn't work like that. You're supposed to master the particular energy that, that you're in first, the one that you was born with, embody that, and then throughout your life, begin to incorporate the other aspects of that polar opposite to then transcend. It's not something that you just hop into one day. It doesn't work like that. I hope that makes sense. I can explain it again if you need me. Thoughts on parallel universes. They're great. I love parallel universe theory. Babe, wake up, Nero's live. Hey, I don't, want, I don't want trouble. Hey, if you're a girl, I don't want you. I don't want to be getting in trouble with your man saying, "Babe, wake up, Nero's live." You don't want none of that. Women are allergic to accountability. Saint, <laughs> this guy. Um, thoughts on drugs? Any prescription from? We thoughts on drugs? Any perspective will do from weed to meth. Take your pick. I don't think weed and meth are. are, are I don't even think they should be mentioned in the same sentence. Like, what? And, you know, there's different types of drugs, so there's psychedelics too. I mean, me personally, I don't do any drugs. I mean, I do like drinking, but I don't really drink that much these days. But, um, yeah, I don't really have an opinion. Like, it's like what's your opinion on cocaine? It's like, oh, probably, not, probably best not to do it, to be honest. Can you name a few of those black history books? Yeah. So The Destruction of the Black Civilization by Chancellor Williams is probably the best book that I've read on black history. And one thing that that taught me that not a lot of black people know is that before the European slavery of the black individual took place, it was done by the Arabs. Arabs were the first people to enslave, to enslave black people. And not a lot of people know this. Before they taught the Portuguese. That, you know, black people, oh, these people, yeah, you can do this. And not a lot of black people know this. And of course, large parts of Africa are Muslim and, you know, they believe it was, it was given to them through any other way other than die by the sword or convert. Because that's quite literally what it was. How do you transition from taking all the information to actually... How do you transition from taking in all the information to actually embodying the knowledge and wisdom? Basically, how to activate self in a way, but not to know it, but live it. The, there's there's no magic answer to that except actually practicing it. And I'm sorry, there's no magic answer. And that's something that I used to think for myself too. I used to think to myself like, damn, you know, how does this actually go? But you just actually have to start practicing this stuff. You need to practice meditation. You need to try visualization, try affirmations, try vision boards, try scripting. See what works for you because reality is ultimately a placebo simultaneously practice non-reactiveness to your thoughts practice self-restraint you know you have to do you have to there's no other way to do it it's like how do you cook a meal without you know 
turning on the stove. It's like, you know, there's no way to do it. You just have to do it, man. And it's something that goes day by day. Like, I understand because, you know, we can know this stuff, but then it does it actually go into our minds? It's a different level, but you only get there through practice, bro. Do you want your kids, if you get any, sheesh, I hope I get some, <laughs> to read as much books as you did? Not necessarily, because I don't think... You know, I got a lot of books here and they look nice and it's quite vain. You know, it's, it's vanity. It's nice. I got a bunch of books behind me. People would be like, wow, he's got a lot of books behind them. But I would get rid of most of these books and probably read like 10 books over and over again for the rest of my life. One thing that I do want my kids to do, by the time my kids are 18, they should have read through the Bible. They should have read through the Quran. They should have read through the Bhagavad Gita and the Torah. That's something that I'm very fixated on. And I always say this to my girl, like, there's no way around that, you know. Sundays, you're reading the Bible, you're reading the Quran, you're reading the, like, there's no way about that. <laughs> and of course, they're going to be looking at it esoterically, because I believe the, there's immense wisdom in these books. So, <clears throat> How many books do you read per month? I don't know, probably like, I couldn't tell you because I've slowed down um, on the books that I've been reading. I, I've slowed down, but I think the most amount of books I ever read and one year was like 80. So you can do the math. So I'm not sure. I'm trying to think. I'm not sure what it is. What's that like? Six? Seven? Just just under seven? Six point something? But something like that. But yeah, I'll slow down. I'll slow down. Thoughts on Islam. It's great. Do you know the Quran? No, I don't know the Quran. I have the Quran right there. And I read it. I read it on like Thursdays. The African depression shit is so true. Yeah, definitely. Thoughts on businesses such as casinos. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say to that. I don't have a particular thought on them. Sorry, bro. Man said, it's self-hate. <laughs> That's crazy. He says Jesus was God. Yeah, 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 yeah. But like I said, not only Jesus was God, and the way that I conceptualize it is like this. So, and I wrote a post about this actually yesterday. So, the way that you can conceive it, right? And if you're a religious person, you shouldn't even be here. And I say you shouldn't even be here because, you know, you're operating from a particular paradigm that I don't want to impose on. If you're a religious person that believes that your book is the truth and this is the correct way to get to heaven, and if you don't, you get to hell, there's no point in, being, in you being here. Because I don't want to convert you anyways. I, I never want to convert anybody. Like, if you're open for a conversation, then definitely. But I just don't see the point of you being particularly here. It's just it's just a waste of everybody's time. It's even a waste of time for me to go to explain if you're only going to revert back to your particular belief paradigm. And that's just me assuming that you are that particular person. You might be a very open-minded person, but that's just kind of like a preface. So the way that I like to kind of break down, you know, the fact that you are gods and a lot of the kind of, foundation that that rests on is it's through the bible so for example we can go to john ten thirty four. john ten thirty four says this is not written in your law i have said ye are gods now christians will say that's taken out of context you shouldn't take it out of context so go read the 10th chapter of john you can feel free to read it i'll give you the context jesus was walking around saying you know before Abraham, I am. Now, I am is the self-definition of God. There's even a hadith in Islam that says, Allah says, I am the way my slave thinks I am. I am in the Bible is how Moses was, you know, came across God. God said, I am that I am. I am hath sent me unto you. I am the way. I am the door. I am the resurrection. I am the alpha. I am the omega. When you introduce yourself to somebody, understanding that this is the name of God, when you introduce yourself to somebody, you say, I am and that's you identifying with the self-definition of God without ever actually understanding that that is the name of God. So 
in that aspect, you are God. And when I say you are God, I'm not saying you created the seven continents and you created the universe and the planets and the stars and all of this stuff. I'm saying you are a physical manifestation of God. Now, when I say a physical manifestation of God, you are part of God in the same way that droplets, you know, even if you scoop up water from the ocean and you drive it deep into the city, you know, if you was to analyze that water, it has the same particular qualities as the ocean, even though it's a droplet, it's still from the ocean of God. When I say you are God, that's exactly what I mean. I mean that within you is where God lies. You know, a lot of people go to a church, they go to a mosque, they go to a synagogue, they go to a temple to believe that they're supposed to worship God. But the highest form of worshiping God is seeing God within you. And then you begin to see God in others. Because if everybody in the world saw God in others, the way that the world is completely organized is completely, it will be completely different. Because before you cast judgment or thought or actions, you take into the consideration that this person is a physical reflection of the same essence that I am from. Because if we stripped away all our vessels, you would see that we are all spirits from the exact same source, whether that source is Allah, Yahweh, Jehovah, the source, the creator, the most high, you know, the infinite intelligence, it doesn't matter. You are a spark of the divine essence. You're an aspect, the fragmentation of that essence. You are a, what's the word? Um, What's the word? You are, you are a fractal nature of it, right? So if you cut an image, no matter how small, it's representative and copy of the exact same image. This is the essence of the universal law of as above, as below. In the same way that the solar system, you know, certain planets orbit the sun, I believe, is it orbit the sun or something like that? The exact shape of that is the exact essence and the way of the atomic structure. And my friend will actually put a side by side photo of this. So yeah, that's what I mean. I hope that makes sense. What's your thought on Transformers? I, lo I love Optimus Prime. <laughs> What are the number one most common mistakes you find your clients make when attempting to consciously manifest but struggling? They, they're not calibrating their frequency before the world calibrates their frequency. Every day before I wake up, before I check my phone, before I even talk to my girl, before my mom doesn't even call me until after 12 anymore because I won't answer. Because in the mornings especially, before I go out into the world, before I go out into business, before I communicate with other people, I'm calibrating my own frequency before the world has the opportunity to calibrate mine. Because when you go out into the world, you can't control what is being thrown at you. Which means that if you don't, program yourself the world will program you if you don't control your frequency the world will control your frequency and a lot of people especially my clients you know they just wake up and they go on their phone they talk to people they do all of this and then afterwards they're like oh my god i'm having difficulty trying to maintain my frequency and it's because you're allowing other people to get their hands on your frequency before you've even meditated before you even prayed and when i say prayed i don't mean big into god um, I don't mean begging to God for salvation. I don't mean begging to God for your life to change because that's not prayer. True prayer isn't verbal, it's mental, right? And you can go to Matthew 6, 6 and Matthew 6, 6 will literally show you that, you know, Matthew 6, 6 says, but when you pray, go into your secret closet and once you're in your closet, close it. And then the prop and your father who's in the secret place will reveal and reward you openly. That's Matthew 6, 6. You can go look at that. The secret place is the mind. The closet that you're closing is the, well, it doesn't say closet. Well, some variations. I believe ESV, English Standard Version, says closet. New King James Version says doors. So the doors, the, eye, the doors or the eyes are also known as the doors or the windows to the soul. Close them. And your father who's in the secret place, God or the father is a representative of the highest level of consciousness. The secret place is the mind. And when you pray to your father who's in the secret place, he will re reward you openly. That's the physical manifestation of it. That's Matthew 6, 6. And you can turn to that. Hello, Abby. I completely agree with you regarding the laws, and this is what I deeply experience as a trans person. Fair enough to you. Are you going to start dropshipping? No, I don't dropship. Versace robe and shades, Nero's bros got that shit on. <laughs> this, is, this is standard, bro. This is standard. Why are men behaving so much like women today? I think because men are in a position where they're being victimized and they're being punished for being men. That's why they're acting like women. If you're going to if you're going to if you're going to disrespect, punish, violate or talk crazy at a man for being a man and of course 
you know, I'm not making any excuses for men being men in a type of harm, in a way that's harmful to people, because that's not what I believe masculinity is. But even this masculinity conversation is so played out. Like, I swear, in 2024, I don't want to see niggas talking about should we split dates and all of this dumb shit. Like, these conver- like when I hear my people having these conversations, it really just hurts me because I'm like, how, how the hell are we having conversations like this? It just shows that we're not in the right place at all. So if the men around you are behaving like women, it's probably because they don't have examples of what being a man is like because most of us aren't raised with a father in the house, me included, which means that it's something for you to go and then learn yourself or you look out to try and emulate other people which you think are actually being masculine, but it's just a form of hyper-masculinity because the most emotional niggas I know are the niggas in jail that have killed people over shit that don't even matter. So... Yeah. Yeah, that's what I have to say on that, to be honest. Thanks for sharing your wisdom. I wouldn't say I'm sharing my wisdom, to be fair. I'm just talking. You know, it's wisdom to some people, and then to others it's not. Reality is a placebo. Wow. Man said, man said JMB. We've got a celebrity in here. I'm not the top G, bro. You're the top G. Guys, on my life, how many people are in here? 54 people. If you all like money, then go to my friend JMB, who you see in the comments. He is literally making people thousands. And I know that sounds bare scammy and it's bare mad. So if JMB actually does scam you, let me know and then I'll scam you again. Um... You should definitely hit him up. Like, his side hustle thing. Like, people are making serious money. I believe he's got all types of stuff there. I'm sure... Just go on his page. He'll tell you anyways. But, yeah. When do you think the system, as you know, will fail? I don't think it will. Because I think most people are stupid. And I don't say that disrespectfully. I mean, most people don't have the capacity. And funny, JMB actually posts about this. NPCs, right? Most people don't have the capacity to think outside their particular paradigm to even question reality. So I think there's a lot more people in the world that are asleep than are awake. So I don't think the system will ever fail. And I think if the system ever does fail, it's just going to be a Trojan horse. They're going to purposely make it look like they fail. So they have misdirected your attention so they can get you the other way. Christianity is an inversion of the truth that Christ is within us all. Exactly. And you can go to Paul. You know, Paul wrote a letter to the Corinthians. What's it? Is it like 2 Corinthians 5.13 or something like that? No, I probably said that wrong. Let me double check. It's 1, it's one Corinthians. Corinthians. Yes, 2, two Corinthians 13.5. And this was Paul writing to the Corinthians, right? He said, examine yourselves as to whether you're in faith. Test yourselves. Do you not know that? Do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is within you unless you fail to unless you fail the test you are disqualified that's 2 Corinthians 2 Corinthians um yeah I don't know why my camera is so dirty that's crazy Yeah that's much better 2 Corinthians 13:5 The Bible is a slave book <sighs> You know, <clears throat> a lot of people say that. And, you know, I, I love this whole consciousness thing because it's so funny because it's like at the moments that we think we know, we don't know. And, you know, when you come to find out that, you know, for example, slavery started in what, six, 1611? I believe, it's, I believe slavery started in 1611. And let me double check. Let me double check because when did slavery start? And when I say slavery, I'm talking about the African slave trade. 1619. Yes, 1619, the African slave trade started. And it was 1611 that the so-called powers that be, right? You can say, you can call them the religious think tanks, had compiled the Bible to then give to the slaves. So on that level, yes, the Bible has been used. You know, if you go to, I believe, 2 Peter Peter 2.18, you know, a good slave is a good Christian. Right. And you can look at it in that aspect. But once you realize that from the from the Bible to the Torah and you know this stuff as you go deeper into it. So let me back out my stuff. So niggas know I'm not just talking crazy over here. 
Because, you know, I always, deal, I always deal with niggas saying the Bible's a slave book. Why do you read it? And it just shows that you haven't gone as far to the origins of these true religions. So, first, get yourself now Valley civilized. Now Valley contribution to civilizations by Anthony Browder. You know, he's got John Henry Clark in there, who's an amazing scholar. And essentially what you're going to find is that from Islam to Christianity to Judaism, all of these three religions are compiled stories that they've hijacked from Mesopotamian, Babylonian and Sumerian stories. All of them. All of them. I'll say that again. Sumerian, Mesopotamian, Babylonian. The stories that you get in the Bible have been stolen from those sources. And once you understand those sources... Once you understand those sources were speaking metaphysically, then the way that you begin to interpret the Bible should be through a metaphysical lens. So I'll tell you this, we'll go to Revelations. When you go to Revelations, you know, part of the end time prophecies that, you know, seven seals would be opened. Who wrote Revelations in that particular chapter? It was a man named Apollonius. Apollonius was a Greek philosopher who went to the East to study Kundalini. And he learned about the seven chakras and the chakra system. So the seven seals are really the seven chakras. And once you begin to understand that these religious scriptures have origins in metaphysical origin, the way that you begin to interpret them should be metaphysical in essence. And I say that as somebody who's read the Bible, I've got every single book that was missing from the Bible, the ones that the Vatican will allow me to have. I have the Nag Hammadi scriptures, which has got the Bible of the Gospel of Thomas, the Gospel of Judas. I've also got the other Apocryphas with people whose names you don't even know. Right? So believe me, when I say the things I say, I know exactly what I'm talking about. So the Bible isn't a slave book. It's, it's actually high level metaphysics that was used as slavery because people have been taught to perceive it at one particular level of consciousness. They've been taught to perceive it from a literal level that people actually believe that this happened and this is going to happen literally without understanding that this is metaphysical in its truest essence. My next validation from that is this, the Anunnaki Bible. Once you get this, this highlights further what I was saying about the stories in the Bible that have been taken from there. So for example, you know, you can look at the story of Noah's Ark. Noah's Ark comes from a Sumerian story called the Epics of Gilgamesh. And these stories are tens of thousands of years older before the word Abraham or Adam was even in existence. And then also, The World's 16 Crucified Saviors. This is an amazing book. You know, it, it goes into, you know, all of these other religious kind of spiritual masters that we call Christ, which existed prior to that. And you see the traces of them in the Bible. So I hope, I hope that puts that to bed because that was a lot of talking. You should go on live more often. I should, innit? I really should. Nero, if Jesus was God, then what was Mary? Do you think the purpose of Mary is to hold women to a higher moral standard? No, not, not, not in particular any degree at all. You need to look at these as reflections of the archetypal energies. So Mary, for example, is representative of the feminine energy. So is Mary Magdalene, right? And what you have to understand is, you know, you kind of need to separate from seeing these as literal people that actually existed. And I'm not here to argue whether they existed or not, because I'll get a bunch of religious people telling me that Jesus existed as proof. Then theologians will say, oh, it's likely there was a man named Yeshua that existed around this time, so on and so forth. And theologians actually haven't reached a solid conclusion if these people existed. They actually haven't. But religious people will tell you that they have and other people will tell you that they haven't. That's a fool's game to argue if a nigga existed 4,000 years ago before you was ever alive. That's a waste of time. Don't go wasting your time on those silly debates. Instead, learn to extract the wisdom from these particular stories as opposed to debating over the, what's the word, chronological evidence of if these people existed in this particular time. You got a podcast now. I do not have a podcast at all. I mean, to me, shit. 
like I told you, I'm not into all that. I'm not into all the niggas shit or niggas are debating if people should be splitting 50-50 and shit. Like, to me, those conversations are mad tired. And it's crazy to me that people even have those conversations on a serious thing. Like, it's like, it's not real. Like, it can't be real. So, you'll never catch me talking about that stuff. And I've been invited on those podcasts, like, big podcasts in the UK, like, that have, you know, you know, that I have mutuals with that are saying, oh, you know, this person has seen your content, you know, would you like to go and talk about, you know, if a man should pay for a woman? I'm like, How? what? Like, what are niggas talking about? Like, that's a waste of time. So you won't, you won't catch me on that. But yeah, yeah. I should go live more often, but, you know, I'm always, I'm always, I'm always just doing shit. What's your diet like? Terrible. I was eating Nando's. I was eating Nando's, what, yesterday? So, I'm not the nigga that you want to come to if, you, if you're trying to look to me for an alkaline diet and all of that. I was eating Nando's yesterday. Shout out, shout out Mailbox Nando's. Shout out Mailbox Nando's. Yeah, I'll probably hop back on live on a week or something. But for now, I am done. I appreciate you guys tuning in. I'm probably going to go read right now or meditate or something. So, appreciate you lot being here. And yeah, if you guys got any questions, then DM me, I guess. A lot of the things I spoke about are on my website. So, just go on neuroknowledge.com. Um, there's hella free articles out there, you know, that will literally give you everything you need to manifest without the nonsense woo-woo stuff. So I'll catch you like that.